I can still hear that damn phone call playing in my head like a broken record. The teacher's voice, all calm and unbearable. Sugarcoating the situation while I, on the other end, grappled with an immediate instinctual panic. At that time, I was just crawling out of a two-year custody battle with my ex-husband. He wasn't interested in Lainey, our daughter, treating her with a stranger's cold indifference. He used the courts to harangue me, a relentless assault that left me inwardly bruised and outwardly haggard. Lainey was the only beautiful thing to come out of that decade-long mess. I clung to her with a ferocity that made every drop off at school a torment. I'd sit in the parking lot, shaking with dread, imagining all the worst things that could happen to her when she wasn't in my care. Parents, we all have those imagined horrors. The kidnapper lurking on every corner, the teacher alone in a vacant classroom, the lurking danger at the school gates. As I answered that call from Lainey's teacher, I knew with the certainty only a mother possesses that something was terribly wrong. It's all right, Miss Cameron, said Miss Paxton, insipid and useless as ever. I'm sure Lainey just wandered off, got a little confused. The park rangers are looking for her. She'll be found in no time. I bit back a dozen accusatory questions. How could they lose her? Isn't it their job to take care of the class? Don't they realize the dangers out there? Savage animals, deep water, steep drops, the agonies, the suffering, the yearning to shield the innocent from the horrors of the world? She's only 10 years old, for God's sake, I snapped. She must be terrified. Yet, deep down, I knew Lainey wasn't the type to be frightened. A placid, adventurous child, unbothered by scratches and bruises, undeterred by separation. I remembered losing her in a mall during the festive season. Found her after three tearful hours, tossing nickels into a fountain, coolly asking, Think my wish will come true, Mom. Nothing truly terrible had ever happened to her, thanks to luck and my meticulous care. But now, as I awaited another call, I pictured a thousand sickening scenarios. The national park where she disappeared had a dark reputation. Missing persons reports and unsavory incidents quietly suppressed from local news. I had opposed the school's decision for a visit, bullied into acceptance. My neurosis, vindicated now, fueled grislier fantasies. Smoking cigarette after cigarette, I envisioned Laney's father, his face like the mask of some malevolent pagan god, greedily savoring the news of her death. Then another call. Good news, Miss Cameron. Laney turned up and she's just fine. Relief flooded me. What happened? Where did you find her? There's something strange, said Miss Paxton. A ranger found her at the bottom of a seven-foot hole in a meadow. Some kind of burrow. Lord knows what made it. Laney must have fallen in by accident. She's not injured, just a little shaken up. I sped to the park. Adrenaline soaked and dreamlike. At the ranger station, Miss Paxton held the hand of a small blonde child. Something felt off as the other kids avoided her, whispering amongst themselves. The blonde child, clad in Laney's outfit, turned awkwardly toward me. A semblance of Laney, but those eyes, the mouth, something was wrong. I questioned Miss Paxton, demanding answers. A ranger, Diane Becker, offered to talk in the station. As I sat, she brewed a cup of coffee, black as night. Who is that kid out there? I asked. She isn't my daughter. Did you find her? My colleague found her, Becker replied. Off shift now, but I can get you her number. The teacher recognized this. I gazed out of the office window, feeling a chill settle over my skin. The mundane surroundings of my workspace were incongruent with the fantastical tale unfolding through the phone. Fairy folk, I repeated, my voice sounding foreign in the artificial quiet of the office. You're telling me that my daughter was replaced by some supernatural being. Melanie hesitated on the other end, the line momentarily filled with static. I'm telling you what I've seen and heard, she finally replied. 
I can't say for certain, but the stories, the disappearances, they all add up to something beyond our understanding. Diane might not admit it, but she's seen it too. People coming back changed. Or not at all. I leaned back in my chair, the weight of the inexplicable bearing down on me. What should I do? I asked, my voice betraying a mix of fear and frustration. There's no easy answer, Melanie admitted, but you need to be careful. These beings, if that's what they are, don't follow the rules of our world. The fact that you recognize the difference, that you're questioning all of this, it's rare. Most people just accept what they see and move on. The unsettling truth settled heavily within me, that my daughter, my Lainey, might be lost to some unearthly entity, and that I stood on the precipice of a reality I couldn't comprehend. Keep an eye on the changeling, Melanie advised. Document everything. If there's a chance to get your daughter back, it'll come from understanding what's happened. I thanked Melanie, the call ending with an eerie finality. As I stared at the phone in my hand, the office seemed to contract around me, the fluorescent lights buzzing in discord with the strange revelations. That evening, I returned home with a newfound determination. The stranger, this changeling, wearing my daughter's face, played in the backyard, oblivious to the storm gathering within me. The rain fell again, a relentless drumming on the windows, as if the very heavens mourned the twisted reality I now faced. I began to research, poring over old folklore and legends, desperate for any clue that might guide me through this labyrinth of uncertainty. The stories echoed Melanie's words, tales of otherworldly beings swapping places with innocent mortals, leaving behind twisted imitations. The changeling continued to mimic Laney's habits. The way she moved, the vacant stare, even attempting to engage in the same playful banner, but every interaction sent shivers down my spine. This was not my daughter. It couldn't be. Days turned into weeks, and the changeling's behavior became increasingly unsettling. It exhibited a peculiar fascination with the backyard, spending hours digging into the soil, unearthing insects and stones, and consuming them with an almost ritualistic fervor. One night, as I sat alone in the dim glow of the living room, the changeling approached, its eyes vacant yet calculating, bore into mine. You're not my daughter, I whispered, the words of feeble assertion against the enigma before me. The changeling smiled, a grotesque imitation of Laney's innocent grin, a voice not quite hers emanated from its lips. But I am. Can't you see, mother? I've come back to you. A surge of dread tightened my chest. I stumbled backward, realizing the gravity of the situation. This creature, whatever it was, had no intentions of leaving. It had woven itself into the fabric of my life, and I was left to grapple with the impossible. As I continued my quest for answers, the line between reality and folklore blurred. The changeling, sensing my growing resistance, became more elusive, vanishing for hours, returning with a disheveled appearance and a feral glint in its eyes. I knew then that I was dealing with something beyond my understanding, a force that defied the laws of nature. The changeling's presence was a mockery of my maternal instincts, a cruel reminder that in the shadows of our world, ancient mysteries lay dormant, waiting to unfurl their malevolent tendrils. And so, with each passing day, I confronted the inexplicable documenting the changeling's every move. The rain persisted, a relentless companion to my torment, as I navigated the twisted corridors of folklore and the unsettling reality that had invaded my home. In the quiet moments, I whispered to the storm, pleading for a solution, a way to reclaim the daughter I had lost to the enigmatic forces that dwelled in the heart of the National Park. Little did I know that my journey had only just begun, and the answers I sought lay hidden in the depths of ancient tales and the uncharted territories of the supernatural. The night air grew colder as I sat beside the burrow, the spade clutched in my hands, its metal chilled by the encroaching darkness. Doubt crept into my mind like an insidious fog, 
shrouding the conviction that had driven me here. What if I had made a grave mistake? What if the child I forcefully cast into the depths was indeed my daughter, lost to the obscure realms beneath the earth? An unsettling silence enveloped the landscape, broken only by the distant murmurs of nocturnal creatures. I strained my ears, hoping for a sign, a whisper of reassurance that my actions had not condemned an innocent child. The minutes stretched into an agonizing eternity. Doubt gnawed at me, a relentless predator feasting on the remnants of certainty. I had gambled with desperation, placing my hopes on a myth, an ancient tale that defied reason. The moon cast its pale glow over the grasslands, a spectral witness to my solitary vigil. Unable to bear the oppressive uncertainty any longer, I rose from the ground, leaving the spade by the burrow's entrance. The trek back to the car felt like a retreat, a surrender to the realization that I might have condemned my daughter to an unknown fate. As I drove through the night, the park's vast expanse seemed to stretch into infinity. Guilt and grief weighed heavy on my chest, each passing mile a reminder of the irreversible choice I had made. The headlights cut through the darkness, illuminating a desolate path that mirrored the abyss of my despair. Arriving home felt like an intrusion into an empty, echoing void. The familiar rooms held the silent echoes of laughter, the lingering scent of Laney's presence. But now they felt haunted, bereft of the warmth that had once defined them. Morning dawned, a reluctant herald of a new day. Sleep had been elusive, replaced by haunting visions of the child falling into the burrow, her muted cries echoing in the hollow spaces beneath the earth. A persistent knock at the door roused me from my tormented thoughts. Reluctantly, I opened it to find Melanie Hale standing on the doorstep, her eyes reflecting a mixture of concern and trepidation. I had to come, she said, her voice a fragile thread in the quiet morning. I couldn't stop thinking about what you said, about the burrow, about everything. I need to know if you're okay. A bitter laugh clawed its way up my throat, but I swallowed it down, feeling the weight of grief constricting my words. I don't know, I confessed. I thought I was doing the right thing, but now, now I don't know if I've lost my daughter forever. Melanie's gaze was filled with a shared sorrow, an acknowledgement of the impossible choices that life thrust upon us. I might have something that could help, she said cautiously. There's an old woman in Walpurgistown. They call her Granny Alara. Some say she has a connection to the park, to the ancient forces that dwell here. If anyone knows what's going on, it's her. Granny Alara became a glimmer of hope in the shadows of despair. With a renewed sense of purpose, I agreed to seek out the elusive figure, hoping against hope that she held the key to unraveling the mysteries that had befallen my family. The journey to Walpurgis Town was a somber pilgrimage, each passing landmark a reminder of the irreversible path I had chosen. Granny Ilara's dwelling, nestled at the outskirts of the town, emanated an aura of ancient wisdom. The air seemed to hum with secrets as I approached the weathered cottage, guided by Melanie's directions. Granny Alara, a stooped figure with eyes that held the weight of centuries, welcomed me into her abode. The interior was adorned with symbols and artifacts, remnants of a knowledge steeped in the lore of the land. You seek answers, she intoned, her voice a whisper of wind through ancient trees. I poured out my tale, the inexplicable events that had unfolded, the child I believed to be a changeling, and the fateful decision at the burrow's mouth. Granny Alara listened, her gaze penetrating the veils of reality. The park, she murmured, her eyes clouded with insight. It harbors ancient forces, beings that traverse the boundaries of our understanding. Your daughter may still be within reach, but the path is fraught with peril. To navigate the realm beneath, you must confront the guardian of the burrows, the watcher of lost souls. 
Guided by Granny Alora's cryptic counsel, I return to the park, an unwitting participant in a mythic struggle between worlds. The landscape seemed charged with unseen energies as I approached the burrow. The spade clutched in my hands once more. The guardian emerged from the shadows, a spectral figure with eyes that mirrored the starlit cosmos. A silent communion unfolded, a negotiation with forces beyond mortal comprehension. In that ephemeral moment, I glimpsed the ethereal bond that connected the burrow dwellers to the ancient pulse of the land. With a gesture, the Guardian opened a passage to the subterranean depths. The descent was a surreal journey through realms unseen, a passage through time and space. The air pulsed with echoes of forgotten whispers as I traversed the labyrinthine corridors. In the heart of the underworld, I found her, Laney, suspended in a timeless cocoon. The child I had believed lost was entwined with the essence of the ancient beings, a bridge between worlds. The Guardian, a silent sentinel, gestured toward Laney, indicating the choice that lay before me, the path back to the surface or the embrace of the arcane forces below. In that moment of reckoning, I understood the delicate balance between the mundane and the extraordinary. The park held secrets that transcended the boundaries of comprehension, and my daughter, caught in the enigmatic dance, bore the weight of a destiny intertwined with the mystical pulse of the land. I faced an impossible choice. To reclaim a semblance of normalcy or to embrace the esoteric threads that bound us to the park's ancient mysteries. The Guardian watched, a silent witness to the profound decision that would shape the course of our lives. The burrows whispered secrets, the wind carried echoes of forgotten tales, and the moonlight cast shadows upon the crossroads where reality and myth converged. In that sacred moment, I reached for Laney's hand, and together we stepped into the uncharted territories that awaited us, a journey into the heart of the park's secrets, where the extraordinary and the mundane coexisted in a delicate dance of existence.